show, and I kept the second one totally off the books, which I'm going to let you introduce. Um, little incident this weekend at Cottage Grove and concerning your sprint car. Let's talk about what happened. I'm going to let you voice your opinion on that, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess uh, it was just sort of a miscue. Um, everybody puts their pants on one leg at a time, and uh, including myself. And I think uh, everyone was kind of in a hurry. Uh, there was a hey, Pat. emergency to get the show in. We had some rain showers. And, um, you know, a lot of the guys that push, um, they're volunteers. They do it out of the kindness of their heart, and uh, the heart of a volunteer is um, worth its weight in gold. Um, you know, the guy just made a miscue, and, and uh, boy, he just went up over the truck. It was like a monster truck scene, <laughs> honestly, and it was Pat, can you me one favor? horrible to watch. And, uh, I'm sorry? Can you talk just a little louder, please? How's that? Much oh, better. Much Thank better. you. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So, yeah, no, it was, uh, I think there was a sense of urgency trying to get the show in. Everybody was hustling. And, uh, you know, I think it was, everybody was probably a little rusty from the winter break. And uh, this poor guy just made a miscue. Maybe it was just a, a moment of indecisiveness. Um, I think, and by the time he touched the throttle on the brake at the same time, it just, it veered off to the right, and off he went, right over the right rear, and um, made a pretty horrible noise, and uh, it was a pretty horrible sight. So it's like something out of a monster truck show. Keep your phone closer. Do it right there. You were getting, you're picking up a little better like that. Okay. Okay, so the situation at Cotter's Grove was your son, Cooper, in the number four, four D, right? Yeah. Was right. Uh, getting pushed off to start, was it the feature? No, gosh, we, this was hot laps. Hot laps. <clears throat> okay, that makes it even worse. So they're pushing him onto the track, and let's tell our listeners what happened as they were pushing your son off to start hot laps in his sprint car. Okay, well, like I said, he, um, oh, we're having a little bit of difficulty. You, you got me loud and clear there? Uh, you're, you're pretty quiet, but go ahead. Just. Okay, I, I apologize. It's okay, it's okay. Is that, uh, is that any better? That is a little better. Okay. Um, I think it was just a miscue. Um, it was maybe a touch of indecisiveness. And uh, I climbed over the right rear and just uh, cleaned out the wing and tore a lot of stuff up. <laughs> so as he's pushing your son off, I already know sprint cars are pushed off. I wasn't there, but I heard that the push truck came up over the right rear corner of your son's car and did a ton of damage to that race car. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It was tough to watch, and it was just horrible to listen to. It was so loud. And, um, it was, yeah, tough to watch and tough to listen to. And then uh, knowing that your evening was done before it even got started was uh, kind of like some, you know, I, and I wasn't even mad. I was more awestruck, you know. And, and I feel bad for the guy um, because, like I said, he's a human being. I'm a human being. We all make mistakes, and... Uh, a lot of people, you know, they're like, man, you're just, you're not even mad. I'm like, well, what can you do, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one of those deals. I mean, I know if it was my car, <laughs> I'd probably be a whole lot more upset than you are. And I know you're upset. We talked about it. But um, in the conversation, you, you mentioned a couple of uh, interesting um outcomes from you know the racetrack and, and some situations that arose afterwards do you want to touch on that or is that something you want to keep on the down low uh you know what i mean we won't um you know a couple people came together um and um felt like it was the right thing to do to to take help me take care of it uh we are literally putting a brand new wing together um as we speak i had to take a break and give you a call and um <clears throat> Like I said, uh, that usually doesn't happen at a lot of racetracks. Uh, I've seen race cars get run over, and I've seen promoters say, you know, sorry, that's it. But uh, um, these, these guys have stepped up to the plate and uh, made it right, and uh, I, can't thank, I can't thank these people enough. I can't thank them enough. That, that's pretty cool because I know <laughs> I would have a hard time biting my tongue in that situation. I think anybody would. 
And that was one thing that when I talked with you was one reason I wanted to get on here was just that you kept your head, um, which, you know, given the hot pit segment, that's going to be kind of a rarity in this situation. But the other thing where I know you were very passionate about and we talked about, which, you know, again, wasn't what I called you about, was the next segment you wanted to talk about and what something that you're just absolutely furious over. And let's, let's touch that base on that. Um, well, um, it, it is something that I'm um, very uh, vocal about, um, is mandatory arm restraints in outlaw cards. Um, I, there's uh, three kids that immediately come to mind um, that have had severe damage to their right forearm. And um, it's the only sport where you've got a gear that's turning six inches from the kid's arm. Um, the most recent incident was down in Chowchilla, Chowchilla, California. And the boy's name was Blaine Baxter. And his dad and I are good friends. I've known him for a while, Dustin. And his right arm was probably 98% severed. They pulled his arm out the back of the car and around the axle. And the tendons, the nerves, and one artery and a couple pieces of skin were all that was holding that boy's arm together. Um, oh, my word. UC Stanford put a team of seven together and worked on that boy for 14 hours, and uh, he is recovering wonderfully. They got some muscle from his uh, back and uh, legs, and they got skin from his legs, and they put his arm back together, and he's going to be back in a race car, and he's, uh, they're, they're never going to race again. I mean, they're never going to race with arm restraint again, period. Um, and... There, uh, there were a couple instances this, this uh, recently where um, even my own boy was uh, black flagged for not having arm restraints on at a track where arm restraints were absolutely mandatory. Um, and then some California cars came up to run at the very same track, won the majority of the big money races, and never made a single lap with an arm restraint. So, um, you know, it's consistency, inconsistency that I have a problem with. Sure. And... Uh, and 90% of these kids all have containment seats now. And containment seats do exactly what arm restraints were designed to do. The belt holds you in the place, and the arms hold, you know, the, the, the seat supports keep your arm in the car. So, um, you know, like I said, I have, anybody wants to contact me, uh, per, you know, straight up on Facebook, I'd be happy to entertain a conversation with anybody that um, wants to talk about it. But, uh, after seeing Blaine, we went to the Outlaw Show in Placerville, and uh, we got to have dinner with Blaine at In-N-Out Burger, and his spirits were up. But seeing that boy in a cast, you know, eating his burger with his left hand, you know, but his spirit was certainly up. But seeing that boy mangled um, just made me sick. It, it, it made my argument uh, that much more uh, strong for sure, me. Sure. Um, another conversation with Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson refuses to run them. Uh, period. He won't run them. He'll tell you that right, right to your face. And uh, like I said, outlaw current racing is the only thing that has a gear and a chain spinning six inches from your elbow. And uh, people that make it mandatory, uh, I think it needs to be an option. It always needs to be an option. I think the Red Bluff in their rules. Um, nailed it perfectly. They are recommended, yet optional. So there's a reason for that. They're the longest running successful go kart program in the nation. Sure. So um, the bottom line is, I'm seeing kids getting hurt. I'm hearing horror stories about kids getting hurt. You know, and then um, you know you get black flagged for one race, and then the following week a guy comes up and wins the thousand dollar race, and he never made a lap with an arm restraint on. So. Um, it's, I, I should say it's the inconsistency. Yeah, inconsistency is uh, probably my biggest gripe. And uh, I got I got to say, uh, as far as consistency, uh, the way Cottage Grove runs their program, I mean, I never had an ounce of trouble all summer. The year before that, the year before that, it's just a, a couple different places. Um, they're trying to reinvent the wheel, you know, and. Uh, eventually a kid's going to get hurt and if the word mandatory is still there that, that opens a whole other ball game um, you know for, for legal activity 
Sure. Now, do you think in a situation like that that the racetrack is accountable for injuries if they make that mandatory and that is the root cause of that injury? You know what? If it says mandatory in those rules and and you end up with an injury like that, all it's going to take is the, the right situation with the wrong parent and the right attorney, and Absolutely. it's going to hurt racing really bad. So uh, some of the safety stuff, you know, uh, I don't believe you should budge on. But this particular instance, without law card, is very, very sensitive to me. You know, especially after sitting and having dinner with uh, Dustin and Blaine Baxter in Placerville. Mm-hmm. You know, seeing that boy, you know, with everything he had on to hold his arm up, just, you know, it it, it, it just mm-hmm. tugged at your heart. I can't imagine seeing that and the, the grotesque, you know, just the whole gore of that. It, it, I that's something you're never going to forget, you know. Um, and I think you're right in a situation like that. you got to look at what's best. Is that the best situation in that class of cars? Maybe, maybe not. I think with what you're saying that there's that risk of, you know, those those restraints run across from your wrist to your wrist or your arm to your arm in front of you. And there are parts that do hang off. That's what got caught up in his chain, correct? Absolutely. It pulled, it pulled his arm literally out the back of the car. It broke the arm restraint and ripped it. You know, it ripped it right around the axle. You know, the thing came skidding to a halt finally, and uh, and his dad ran to the scene, and it was uh, it was tough on him. You know, we we talked uh, extensively on, on the phone. You know, after you know, I gave him some space and respect um, at the beginning, and then I finally reached out to him, and we had a nice long conversation, and you know, father to father, and uh, it was it was a tough conversation. Sure. You know. Well, I can I can tell you. It ended, Go ahead. No, no, no. And, I, and, it, and it warms it warms my heart to know that that he's going to bounce back and get back in a car. Um, but it, if if, uh, if if this kind of stuff isn't addressed, you know, it's going to hurt the sport. You know, I, again, there's a there's a reason it was written like that at Red Bluff. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously. Bob Carroll and Robert Carroll and the guys that started all that down there, they've, they've paid the dues, they've paved the way for outlaw parts. You know, they've, they've had all the hiccups and growing pains. Those rules are like that for a reason. You know, arm restraints were designed in the late 60s after uh, Johnny Rutherford got hurt. Right. Uh, really bad. Knocked out cold at uh, Eldora. And there's images, you can Google the images, Johnny Rutherford crash Eldora. And it'll show him limp and out cold in the car with his arms literally extended straight out above the cage. He had broken arms and pretty serious damage, and that's why arm restraints were designed. Mm-hmm. So now you have containment seats, you know, which is mm-hmm. exactly that. And uh, most everybody has them now, you know. Um, so to, to make them mandatory in a go kart, I just I think it's just we won't run them, and, yeah. you know. And if we show up to a place and it's mandatory, we're going to go to dinner somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I, but here's here's my thoughts on them. I'll tell you right now, I'm not a fan of them, and I'll tell you why. When I was running my mini sprint, the micro, at Cotter's Grove, they I had an official tell me, you have to have arm, and that's after I've ran four or five races. They say, you have to run arm restraints. So I got some arm restraints, I put them on. I right. couldn't drive the car. I could not drive the car because I didn't have the range of motion that I use when I drive. I spun the car out twice because I didn't have I couldn't use them with the straps from arm to arm. Under caution, I actually took them off and threw them out the window. And afterwards, they said, you can't right. do you can't. I just, I, I'm not a fan of them. I know that they're there for, you know, especially in sprint cars, full-size sprint cars, it's a different story. I didn't like them. I ran right. one day with them and threw them out the window and never used Thank them again. <clears throat> Well, but, you know, they are not mandatory with the World of Outlaws organization. Right. I don't know if you knew that. I, I I did some research on it. Um, USAC is the only um, national sanctioning body that uh, um, requires arm restraints. And Larson still won't run them. So, you know, well, yeah. that's a pretty bold statement. You know, one of the most successful guys that's ever wheeled a silver crown car, a midget sprint car, winged or non winged, asphalt or dirt, refuses to wear them. So, um, you know, Kyle. You know, he, he, a lot of guys. Here's another problem with them. I mean, they'll they'll throw a belt. You get them caught just right, they'll throw your belt. So you take your mind off the car. Oh my gosh, I just threw my belt. You hook a rut. Then you flip. Now you're on the track. Right. Absolutely. You know. 
So, so um, but you know what? Getting getting back getting back to the push truck thing. 